Did you know that some galaxies grow by feeding on other galaxies? In the very beginning, there was the Big Bang, the scientific theory that explains the very first moments of the universe. 13.8 billion years ago, this Big Bang resulted in an extremely dense and hot universe. It was like a gigantic torrid magma composed of elementary particles such as electrons, photons, quarks, and a few others, all existing in total disharmony. Then, in the space of a few hundred million years, the cosmos went from a disordered, unstructured state to a richly structured universe. Research carried out by scientists over the last few decades is helping us to understand the history of the universe, its current structure, and in particular, the formation of galaxies. This is a fundamental question that conditions the formation of stars and consequently of planets in the synthesis of our atoms. The formation of galaxies is recognized as an extremely difficult question, since galaxies are considered to be wonderfully complex objects. Dear Traveler, welcome. Today we're off to explore the universe and discover cosmic cannibals. But before you leave for a new adventure, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. Thank you, and have a great trip. The first galaxies in the universe were far less massive than those we find today. According to current models, primitive galaxies gradually grew in size. How long a galaxy took to form is still unclear and depends on many factors. Recent discoveries by the James Webb have revealed the formation of a very massive population of galaxies produced between 500 and 700 million years after the Big Bang. One of these galaxies is thought to contain over 100 billion stars, as many as our own Milky Way galaxy. It took our own galaxy 13.8 billion years to form this many stars, while this young galaxy would have done the same in just 700 million years i.e. 20 times faster. Today, there are two different scenarios to explain galaxy growth. On the one hand, there's talk of violent merging processes as large galaxies absorb smaller ones, and on the other, there's talk of a long continuous flow of gas being swallowed up by the galaxies. In both cases, many new stars are formed. It would seem that the latter theory played a significant role in the formation of galaxies in the young universe, and that the former theory of merging galaxies is what happened next. Galactic cannibalism is a relatively frequent phenomenon in the universe. It is a process whereby a massive galaxy attracts and devours a smaller galaxy until it is completely absorbed. This phenomenon played a key role in the evolution of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Indeed, our own galaxy was built in part by devouring neighboring galaxies that sailed a little too close to it. Although this mode of assimilation may seem violent and brutal, it is widespread in the cosmic jungle. How are galaxies born and formed in the universe? And how does galactic cannibalism play out in practice? A galaxy is defined as a collection of stars, dust, and interstellar gas. Gravitation holds them together. 
Galaxies range in size from 2,000 to several million light years across and come in many different shapes. Thanks to the radiation they emit, galaxies can be categorized into normal and active galaxies. The latter have an active nucleus at their center, which is much brighter than normal. In the universe, when galaxies group together, we speak of clusters and superclusters. The galaxy to which we belong is the Milky Way. Today, tens of thousands of galaxies have been counted, and the observable universe is said to contain over 2,000 billion of them. Thanks to their studies and research, scientists have defined three main types of galaxy. The first are spiral galaxies like the Milky Way. These are the most numerous galaxies in the universe. They contain large quantities of gas and dust, as well as a disk containing young stars and a bulge containing old stars. This disk is often extended by one or two spiral arms and is filled with dust and gas stars. The second type of galaxy is elliptical. They are mainly made up of old stars and contain little gas and dust. Their structure is spheroidal. Finally, irregular galaxies, the last type of galaxy, are much less massive and contain young stars. From the very beginning of its formation, the universe must have been very uniform devoid of stars, galaxies, or any other type of structure. Little by little it was transformed into a spectacle of shapes and colors, filled with stars, galaxies, and galactic clusters. Originally, the density of the universe was only subject to small deviations from homogeneity due to the incessant movements of particles, stirred up by radiation continuously created density perturbations use gravitation to expand. The force of attraction imposed by their own mass enabled them to draw in surrounding matter. This is how homogeneity gaps were created in the universe. Hypotheses concerning the formation of galaxies are based on two scenarios. On the one hand, the hierarchical theory implies that the first structures to form were those with a mass equivalent to around one million times the mass of the Sun. More massive structures, such as galaxies, were formed by the accumulation of smaller ones. Galaxies gathered in groups and clusters, culminating in imposing structures like superclusters linked by the force of gravity. Another theory, that of fragmentation, argues that the smallest structures originated from the fragmentation of the largest. In this sense, superclusters would have been created first. Then, yielding to the pressure of gas and radiation, they would have collapsed, occupying immense spaces and being subjected to the expansion of the universe the large primordial structure would have flattened out under the forces of expansion, taking on the appearance of a sheet of dense matter. As it contracted, it would have given rise to filaments stretching over millions of light years, which would then have split into smaller entities that would have become galactic clusters and then simple galaxies. Current research favors the first theory, However, various data still cast doubt on this theory. Indeed, astrophysicists have observed that the most massive galaxies created their stars very early in the history of the universe. This remains a mystery. Several hundred million years after its formation, the structure of the first galaxies begins to take shape. 
they consist of globular clusters, the central supermassive black hole, and the galactic bulge containing stars. During this period, the galaxy is in the throes of star formation. Then, over the next two billion years, matter settles in the galactic disk. However, the galaxy will continue to absorb surrounding matter throughout its lifetime. The evolution of a galaxy can be strongly affected by interaction or collision events. Indeed, collisions are far from rare in the universe. Given the vast distances separating stars from one another, collisions are extremely rare. However, the dust and gas of the two structures mix and interact. The gravitational forces at play disrupt the original structure of each galaxy, forming zones of higher density. This leads to the formation of new stars. In the early history of the universe, galaxies were closer together and more likely to collide. Today, despite the expansion of the universe, galaxies are still showing signs of merging and colliding. Galactic cannibalism sometimes occurs when a massive galaxy collides with a smaller one. As a result, the former literally swallows the latter until it is completely absorbed. Intergalactic interactions occur when one galaxy is disrupted by the gravitational field of another. This can take the form of a minor interaction as when a satellite galaxy disturbs the arms of a spiral galaxy, or a major interaction such as a collision or merger of two galaxies. Collisions occur when the two galaxies collide at a speed that allows each to continue on its course. Stars do not collide, but gas and dust do. The interstellar medium heats up, and galaxies can see their trajectories deviate. In most cases, their original shape is altered. Another, more violent interaction phenomenon is galaxy mergers. This occurs when two galaxies move towards each other, but neither can free itself from the other's grip. This has major consequences for their metabolisms. In most cases, the two merging galaxies form a single larger galaxy. When one of the two galaxies is much smaller than the other, the merger is akin to galactic cannibalism. The larger one remains unchanged, but dislocates the smaller one and devours it entirely. In the Lynx constellation, two galaxies were caught in the act of cannibalism. NGC 2798 is a barred spiral galaxy 93.9 million light years away. Its diameter is around 76,300 light years. NGC 2799 is a Magellanic type barred spiral galaxy. Its diameter is around 55,400 light-years. NGC 2798 was first discovered in 1788 by William Herschel due to its slightly higher brightness. NGC 2799 was discovered in 1874 by astronomer Ralph Copeland. Just a few years ago, Spectacular images taken by the Hubble telescope immortalized the scene of cosmic cannibalism between these two distant galaxies. In the image, NGC 2798 appears like a vacuum cleaner, drawing the stars of NGC 2799 into its center. Although the space between the stars is so large, that stellar collisions are unlikely, the sucked-in stars shine brightly and appear to be caught up in an uncontrollable chaos.
The Milky Way, our galaxy, is part of a large group of galaxies known as the Local Group. Some 60 galaxies belong to this group. The Local Group itself belongs to a supercluster of galaxies known as the Local Supercluster. Within the Local Supercluster sit dozens of smaller galaxy clusters like the Local Group. The local supercluster is centered on a giant cluster of galaxies called the Virgo Cluster. This cluster lies 50 million light years from the Milky Way. Within the Virgo Cluster lies a giant cannibal galaxy, Messier 87, which attracts and absorbs its neighboring galaxies. The Virgo Cluster is a gigantic cluster located between 48.9 and 71.8 million light years away. It was discovered by Charles Messier in 1781 when he drew up a map of the most important galaxies, including M87. The Virgo cluster is located in the constellation Virgo. It is thought to contain between 1300 and 2000 galaxies most of them visible through a small telescope. It comprises a heterogeneous mix of spiral and elliptical galaxies. The Virgo Cluster is an agglomeration of at least three very different subclusters. Virgo A is the one centered on the giant elliptical galaxy Messier 87. It is the dominant group of all the subclusters composed of a mixture of mostly gas-poor, spiral, elliptical, and lenticular galaxies. Recent X-ray observations by the Chandra Space Telescope suggest that the three subgroups have merged to form a single cluster. The other surrounding clouds and smaller galaxies are also moving closer to the cluster center. Even more distant galaxies and galaxy groups are finding themselves attracted by the Virgo Cluster's gravity and will certainly merge with it in the future. These data imply that the Virgo Cluster is relatively young and still forming. But now, back to the giant galaxy we're interested in, in the direction of Messier 87. Messier 87 is also known as NGC 4486. It is an elliptical supergiant galaxy. Some 50.2 million light years away, it remains the largest and most luminous galaxy in the Virgo cluster. M87 was discovered by German astronomer Johann Gottfried Kohler in 1779. Charles Messier rediscovered it and included it in his catalog, published in 1781, in which M87 is listed as the 87th object. In the 1880s, Messier 87 was listed as NGC 4486 in a catalog of nebulosities and star clusters compiled by astronomer John Dreyer. In 1918, an American astronomer, Haber Doust Curtis, noted that Messier 87 had no spiral structure, but a curious straight ray, apparently connected to the nucleus by a thin line of matter. It was American astronomer Edwin Hubble who later classified Messier 87 as one of the brightest globular nebulae. In 1926, he created a new classification of nebulae. He included Messier 87 in the class of extragalactic elliptical nebulae with no apparent elongation. In 1956, Messier 87 was recognized as a circular, elliptical, EO-type galaxy. The Virgo A radio source was located in 1947 and confirmed as part of M87 six years later. The source is the jet emanating from the nebula's core.
Since its discovery, Messier 87 has been a favorite target for observation by amateur and professional astronomers alike, thanks to its proximity to Earth and its high luminosity in the sky. But what are its special characteristics? Messier 87 lies on a line joining the stars Epsilon, Virginis, and Beta Leonis near the constellation Bernice's Hare, at the northern limit of the constellation Virgo. The galaxy has an apparent magnitude of 9.59. A simple 6 centimeter or 2.4 inch diameter telescope can spot it, but its jet is difficult to observe without photographic aid, and will require a large diameter telescope and very good observing conditions. According to Hubble's classification, M87 is designated as an EOP galaxy. The EO designation implies an elliptical galaxy showing no flattening, and the P categorizes it as a peculiar galaxy as it does not fulfill all the characteristics of its class due to the presence of the jet emanating from its core. Messier 87 has a core surrounded by a diffuse, extended, dust-free envelope. M87's galactic halo and diameter are much larger than its visible part, reaching nearly 1 million light-years. M87's total mass is estimated at around 200 times that of the Milky Way. Its extended stellar envelope is around 978,000 light-years in diameter, compared with the Milky Way's 326,000 light-years. But how is M87 structured? The M87 galaxy features a supermassive black hole at its center. It has been named M87 asterisk, M87 because of its host galaxy and the attribute asterisk in reference to the quasi-punctual source of radio waves. It is the first black hole to be imaged by very long baseline interferometry in April 2019. Its mass is one of the highest for this type of object, estimated at around 6.5 billion solar masses. The radius of its event horizon, the area around it in which no object or even a ray of light can escape the black hole's gravitational field, is 19 billion kilometers, or 11.8 billion miles, equivalent to 2.5 times the distance from the Sun to the Kuiper Belt. Its average density is equivalent to that of air at the level of Mount Everest. Surrounding the black hole is an accretion disk of ionized gas, oriented perpendicular to the jet. The gas is drawn into the black hole at a rate equivalent to about one solar mass every 10 years. At its maximum distance, the disk reaches a diameter of 24,800 astronomical units, or around 100 times the diameter of the black hole the black hole appears to be rotating very rapidly. M87's black hole is offset by around 81.5 light years from the galaxy's center and is oriented in the opposite direction to the jet. Messier 87 has a stellar population dominated by old stars, which are population two stars containing few elements apart from hydrogen and helium little dust remains to form a diffuse nebula. The random orbital paths of Messier 87 stars stabilize the galaxy's elliptical shape. The space between each star is filled with an interstellar medium enriched with chemical elements ejected by the stars during their evolution. Throughout its evolution, Messier 87's interstellar medium 
has been continuously supplied with elements from Type 1A supernovae. Although Messier 87 is an elliptical galaxy and therefore does not have a dust band like spiral galaxies, optical filaments with a mass estimated at around 10,000 times solar mass have been observed within the galaxy. As a result, M87 is surrounded by a broad corona of hot, low-density gas. The galaxy has a high population of globular clusters. Indeed, one study estimated the number to be around 12,000, while the Milky Way only counts between 150 and 200. These clusters get larger the further away you are from the galaxy's center. Recent studies have revealed that Messier 87 has completely absorbed a galaxy over the last few billion years. Stars from a feast galaxy would have amalgamated with their fellow stars within the cannibal galaxy M87. Scientists were able to confirm this hypothesis thanks to an extended portion of Messier 87's outer halo, which appears much brighter than it would have if the merger had not taken place. The study focused on planetary nebulae the envelopes of gas surrounding older stars, and not on the totality of stars, which are far too luminous and numerous to be studied individually. The motion of 300 planetary nebulae have been measured at distances close to those of M87. They look like little green lights from Earth, indicating their position and the speed of their movements. To better understand the research, compare it with water contained in a glass and poured into a lake. Even if it becomes imperceptible, it nonetheless generates disturbances that are likely to be visible. This is how the movements of planetary nebulae provide information about past fusion. The study revealed that a medium-sized galaxy is falling towards the center of Messier 87. Gravitational forces are such that stars are now spread over an area 100 times larger than the original galaxy. The stars coming from the Feast Galaxy are stretched on all sides, causing the peripheral areas of the host galaxy to become brighter. Thanks to the merger, the Messier 87 galaxy has been enriched with younger, bluer stars. Within the constellation Furnace, some 70 million light years from Earth, lies a vast lenticular galaxy with a disk but no well-defined spiral arms, known as NGC 1316, or Furnace A, or Fornax A. It was discovered by Scottish astronomer James Dunlop in 1826. The galaxy is described as a radio galaxy, since most of its energy comes from a jet emitting radio waves. Its nucleus has an emission spectrum with broad lines of weakly ionized atoms. NGC 1316 has had an eventful history which was revealed when astronomers took a long look at it and its neighbor NGC 1317 using a 2.2 meter or 7 foot telescope at La Silla in Chile in 2010. While NGC 1317 appears to be a small spiral galaxy with a peaceful existence, NGC 1316 turns out to have swallowed up several other galaxies during its existence. The remains of this cannibalism are still visible. Astronomers have spotted unusual traces of dust within an envelope of stars, as well as smaller than average globular clusters. The first clue proves that NGC 1316 swallowed up a dust-laden spiral galaxy around 3 billion years ago. 
galactic tidal effects have been spotted at the edge of NGC 1316. These are the remnants of stars torn from their birthplace and hurled into intergalactic space. Their gravitational effects on stellar orbits occur whenever a nearby galaxy approaches. The NGC 1316 galaxy has thus fed off other galaxies, and its environment is still disrupted as a result. It is now the most important source of radio waves in the Furnace constellation, and the fourth most important radio source in the universe. This is because matter is falling into a supermassive black hole at the galaxy's center. This same black hole has been fed by the galaxy's interactions with other galaxies. The black hole's mass is estimated at between 130 and 150 million times the mass of the Sun. NGC 1316 began its meal 3 billion years ago and is still in the process of digestion. Total fusion is currently in progress. Some scientists agree that it will eventually become a system dominated by a large galactic bulge. Although 3C297 can be seen completely alone, some 9.2 billion light years from our planet, it was once part of a cluster of galaxies. Under the effect of its powerful gravitational force, its neighbors would have been drawn to it and then totally assimilated. According to the study carried out by the scientists, certain traces of a galaxy cluster have been found. Firstly, large quantities of gas were measured, with extreme temperatures of several million degrees. Then, a supermassive black hole swallowing gas and emitting a plasma jet over a distance of 140,000 light years is also present. With these elements, the team expected to find a galaxy cluster, but in the end, almost all the galaxies are missing. They were certainly attracted and absorbed by the cannibal galaxy. The galaxy 3C297 is now cataloged as a fossil group. This is a galactic system in which some or all of the component galaxies have merged to form a single galaxy. 3C297 is even the most distant fossil group of galaxies ever identified. It will thus continue its solitary life for several billion years. NGC 7252, also known as Atoms for Peace, is a lenticular galaxy found in the constellation Aquarius, some 220 million light years from Earth. The galaxy was discovered in 1785 by the astronomer William Herschel. NGC 7252 is the result of the merger of two galaxies. Around one billion years ago, two spiral galaxies collided, one becoming a host galaxy and the other a feast galaxy. Now, at the center of NGC 7252, lies a spiral-shaped disk some 10,000 light years across, undergoing an intense wave of star formation. It would appear that the two bulges of the original galaxies have merged and that in the distant future, NGC 7252 will become an elliptical galaxy. The tidal tails that form as a result of the collision stretch for almost 500,000 light years. The collision has given rise to young globular clusters and groups of bluish stars. Also known as Centaurus A, NGC 5128 lies in the constellation Centaurus, some 38.6 million light years from Earth. This lenticular galaxy was discovered by astronomer James Dunlop 
in 1826 and is now the fifth brightest galaxy in the sky. It is one of the closest radio galaxies to Earth. Its active galactic nucleus has been the object of study by amateur and professional astronomers for many years. Seen from Earth, Centaurus A is a galaxy with an extraordinary morphology. It resembles a lenticular or elliptical galaxy with a superimposed band of dust. It is this particular morphology that has led to the explanation that it is the result of a merger between two smaller galaxies. NGC 5128 contains an active core due to the presence of a supermassive black hole from which two opposing jets of matter flow. Old red stars populate the central zone. The central zone is crossed by a curved disk of dust containing atomic and molecular gases New stars are born near and inside the disk. The mass of Centaurus A's supermassive black hole is estimated at 55 million solar masses. Research has not yet determined whether this black hole has always been within Centaurus A, or whether it is the result of a merger with a spiral galaxy. The galaxy's core is very compact and shows a variation in the intensity of its radio and X-ray radiation. Linear jets shoot out from either side of the nucleus, expanding into mushroom-shaped jets when they reach a distance of 16,300 light-years. The dust band crossing NGC 5128 is a disk seen from the side, 26,100 light-years in diameter and 652 light-years thick. It is made up of metal-rich stars, nebulae, and dust clouds. Within the dust belt, a burst of star formation began 50 million years ago. The rate of star formation appears to be 10 times higher than in the Milky Way. Centaurus A produces a lot of energy from gas falling back into the central black hole. Some of it is then propelled back into the two jets at impressive speeds. The northern jet is clearly visible, while the opposite southern jet is much less visible and has only been discovered thanks to a few knots. These jets are linear in shape until they reach the interface of the galaxy's interstellar and intergalactic gas, where a shock wave forms and they take on the shape of mushrooms. Their total length is around 30,000 light years. Thanks to a technique using near-infrared images taken with ESO's 3.58 meter or 12-foot diameter new technology telescope, astronomers were able to observe Centaurus A swallowing its meal with flawless precision. The little spiral galaxy appeared twisted and distorted. Thousands of star clusters swirled inside Centaurus A, representing the crumbs of cosmic fusion. To witness the meal of a giant cannibal galaxy live in this way remains rare and exceptional. The constellation Pegasus dominates autumn nights. It can be spotted in association with Perseus, Andromeda, and Cassiopeia. These are all neighboring constellations. Pegasus forms a majestic square of stars, the main part of the constellation. Within this constellation, Edward Stephan first spotted a group of galaxies in 1878. At the time, it was catalogued as an aggregate of nebulae, but it was later revealed by Edwin Hubble in 1924 that these were galaxies made up of billions of stars, far removed from the Milky Way. With a magnitude of 14, a telescope of at least 20 centimeters or 8 inches in diameter is required, 
as well as good observing conditions to catch a glimpse of the quintet. Stefan's quintet is made up of five galaxies, NGC 7317, NGC 7318A, NGC 7318B, NGC 7319, and NGC 7320. The first four are located relatively close together, around 340 million light years from the Milky Way. Their spiral arms and disks are highly altered by tidal forces. NGC 7320 is much closer to us, between 35 and 40 million light years away. These five galaxies show clear signs of gravitational interaction. Filaments of gas and stars are escaping from them as a result of the attractive forces that bind them together. NGC 7318A and NGC 7318B show the strongest interaction. A large proportion of their components have intermingled, forming a zigzag structure from which it's easy to spot their two bright cores. In 2018, the galactic cannibalism of Stefan's quintet was observed in even greater detail. Indeed, thanks to the extreme image quality of the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope, new information has been uncovered about how the quintet formed. While the researchers were originally capturing images of NGC 7331, a nearby spiral galaxy, their attention was focused on a concentration of galaxies in its background. This concentration turned out to be Stefan's quintet. This revealed an extensive red halo of older stars, centered on one of the elliptical galaxies, NGC 7317. These data show that the quintet is still interacting strongly, whereas scientists previously thought the opposite. What's more, NGC 7317, thought to be rather quiet, turns out to be still very active with the other members of the group. Stefan's quintet is indeed the scene of widespread galactic cannibalism. It is a highly coveted object of study for astrophysicists wishing to investigate the collective evolution of galaxies undergoing interaction, collision, or shock processes. In the long term, this cannibalism should lead to the formation of a single giant elliptical galaxy. Within the Eridan constellation, a magnificent pair of galaxies clearly displays its interaction. They lie more than 50 million light years from Earth. The first stretches over 300,000 light years in diameter, and the second over 240,000 light years. These are the NGC 1531-1532 pair. NGC 1531 is a small lenticular galaxy located 54.5 million light years away. It was discovered by astronomer John Herschel in 1835. It has a high surface brightness and an estimated diameter of around 23,800 light years. NGC 1532 is a very large barred spiral galaxy. It lies 47.3 million light years away and was discovered in 1826 by astronomer James Dunlop. Its diameter is currently estimated at around 303,000 light years. The larger of the two, Spiral Galaxy NGC 1532, has drawn dwarf galaxy NGC 1531 into its gravitational influence. The latter is now a prisoner, subject to the forces imposed on it by the larger galaxy. In the long term, it will disappear in a total merger with NGC 1532. Thanks to the 8-meter or 26-foot diameter 
Gemini South Telescope at Cerro Pachon, Chile, an exceptionally splendid image of the NGC 1531-1532 duo has been obtained. NGC 1532 is in the foreground, beset by bands of dust. NGC 1531 lies in the background, but is easy to spot thanks to its bright core just above the center. All along the upper right edge of the front spiral arm, numerous young clusters of bright blue stars appear, born of the gravitational attraction residing between the two galaxies. Messier 51 is the most easily observable pair of interacting galaxies. Simply by using binoculars with 10 times magnification, you can make out the two tiny spots next to each other. The two diffuse stars separate as soon as you use an 80 mm telescope. With a 200 mm telescope, the two galaxies can no longer hide their bright cores and quasi-stellar appearance. Finally, with a 400 mm telescope, the main galaxy clearly displays its spiral arms, which are covered with small knots that are in fact large star clusters. Charles Messier first discovered this galaxy in 1773 in the constellation of the Hounds. It lies more than 30 million light years from Earth. M51 is also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. It is the result of the meeting of two galaxies. NGC 5194 is the larger of the two. It is a spiral galaxy. NGC 5195, the smaller of the two, is a lenticular galaxy. The larger galaxy tugs so hard at its smaller companion that the smaller galaxy is completely distorted, making it difficult for astronomers to classify it. A bridge of matter appears to link the two objects, but this is in fact a deceptive perspective effect. Tiny NGC 5195 lies a few hundred thousand light years behind NGC 5194. Around 500 to 600 million years ago, NGC 5195 would have crossed the disk of the larger one the smaller galaxy would have penetrated the disk from behind towards us, and even made another encounter between 50 and 100 million years ago to reach its current position. The interactions between these two galaxies produced a flurry of new stars. Using the Hubble telescope, astronomers have detected more than 100 ionized nebulae in the larger of the two. In the Sagittarius constellation, one particular galaxy is shaped like a bird. With the scientific names ISO 593, IG008, but better known as Tinkerbell, this galaxy lies around 650 million light years from Earth. Its wings extend over 100,000 light years, roughly the size of our own Milky Way. This marvelous star is in fact the result of the encounter between two spiral galaxies and an irregular galaxy, although scientists have long thought that only two galaxies were involved in this collision. Thanks to ESO's very large telescope, a team of astronomers has now been able to study this peculiar triple system in a little more detail. The images reveal two galaxies interpenetrating perpendicularly, forming the body and wings of the creature. The third massive irregular galaxy forms the bird's head. This is where stars are born at a spectacular rate of nearly 200 solar masses per year. It is the system's main source of infrared luminosity, despite being the smallest of the three galaxies. This trio of galaxies strongly resembles a winged creature. The result 
is a mega galaxy called the Tinkerbell Triplet. Located in the constellation of the Sculptor, some 423 million light years from us, lies the Cartwheel Galaxy, a lenticular ring galaxy, also known by its scientific name, ESO 350-40. With a diameter of around 180,000 light years, it is a larger galaxy than the Milky Way. It was first observed by astrophysicist Fritz Zwicky in 1941. Its name was given for obvious reasons. Its shape resembles that of a wheel, with a hub in the middle, the rim around the rim, and the semblance of spokes running from the center to the periphery. This particular shape is thought to be the result of a collision with a small galaxy around 200 million years ago. Prior to the impact, the Wagon Wheel Galaxy would have had a spiral shape, like that of the Milky Way. The small galaxy would have passed through it, creating a shock wave and a gigantic gravitational disturbance. As the Wagon Wheel Galaxy is of greater mass than the galaxy responsible for the impact, the latter will eventually be swallowed up by the larger one. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we were able to observe this galaxy in all its splendor, as well as the dust that surrounds it. The collision between the two galaxies has formed two rings extending from the center of the galaxy to its periphery. The first ring contains a lot of dust and gigantic clusters of young stars, making it very luminous at its core. The second ring has been extended for 440 million years. It collides with the surrounding gas, giving rise to hundreds of millions of new stars. A study of the galaxy reveals zones rich in hydrocarbons and other chemical compounds, as well as dust whose composition is very similar to that of terrestrial dust, composed of silicates. It is these zones that take on the spiral ray shape so representative of the Wagon Wheel Galaxy. The Lyra constellation peaks at midnight in early July, passing close to the zenith at our latitudes. It revolves around its brightest star, Vega. NGC 6745 is a very special member of this constellation, 200 million light years away. It is a pair of interacting galaxies. It consists of NGC 6745A, the main member, and NGC 6745B, its companion. A few hundred million years ago, the small irregular galaxy, NGC 6745b, would have partially passed through NGC 6745a. The latter was almost certainly a spiral galaxy before the collision took place. Its structure is now totally altered. This cannibal galaxy has absorbed most of NGC 6745b's interstellar medium, leaving the latter stripped of most of its interstellar gas and dust. Between the two galaxies lie star clusters around 10 million years old. This is gas extracted from the larger galaxy, which has begun to form new stars in large quantities. The constellation Bernice's hair lies between Leo and Bouvier, with declinations between plus 13 degrees and plus 33 degrees, it can be seen from almost anywhere on planet Earth. Its brightest star is Beta, with a magnitude of 4.3. The Bernice hair constellation is rich in galaxies and other telescopic objects. It also features a pair of galaxies in the throes of cannibalism. 
This is the Mouse Galaxy. NGC 4676A and NGC 4676B form a pair of lenticular galaxies. The pair was discovered by astronomer William Herschel in 1785. They were later listed in the index catalog as IC819 and IC820. The first member of this duo, IC819, is a vast lenticular galaxy. It is an active galaxy some 328 million light years away. Its companion, IC820, is also a lenticular galaxy 327 million light years away. It is also referred to as a low surface brightness galaxy, meaning that it is a diffuse galaxy whose surface brightness is less than one magnitude lower than that of the night sky. They are known as the mouse galaxies because of their long tidal tails of stars and gas. The pair are in the process of merging and will eventually form a single gigantic elliptical galaxy. The luminous star clusters gas and stars currently present in the tails will position themselves in the new galaxy or remain in orbit in its halo. In 2002, the Hubble Space Telescope captured an image through blue and orange filters as well as through a near-infrared filter. This is the most precise image of the mouse galaxy available. Blue cascades in the IC820 galaxy reveal clusters of hot, massive young stars whose birth was triggered by gravitational perturbations when the two galaxies met. Matter flows between the two galaxies can also be observed. In the long tail of IC819 are clusters of young stars separated by brighter regions this suggests that the star clusters were formed from the gravitational collapse of gas and dust that was originally in place within these zones. The blue then yellow color of the long tails contrasts with the brown of the galaxy core. Due to the gigantic size of the galaxies, the cannibalism process is proceeding very slowly at an approximate radial velocity of 6,600 kilometers per second, or 4,100 miles per second. Full merger will take several hundred million years. In the Ophiuchus constellation lies NGC 6240, a vast irregular galaxy 352 million light years from Earth. It was discovered in 1871 by French astronomer Edouard Stephan, NGC 6240 is characterized as a liner galaxy, meaning that its nucleus has an emission spectrum characterized by broad lines of weakly ionized atoms. NGC 6240 is one of the most powerful sources of infrared emission in the sky. They are in fact two galaxies in fusion emitting gravitational jets of stars, gas, and dust. These ultra-bright infrared galaxies fascinate astronomers because of their powerful luminosity. They are generally the result of the merging of gas-rich galaxies, triggering a period of intense star formation. This, combined with the activity of their nuclei, is what gives them their high luminosity. NGC 6240 has two nuclei, corresponding to the final phase of the merger of the two galaxies. In the long term, only a single galaxy will remain. The supermassive black holes at the center of each galaxy will merge into a much larger black hole in a few tens or hundreds of millions of years. Today, however, they are separated by a distance of 3,000 light-years. Because of this proximity, 
Astronomers believe that the two black holes have been spiraling around each other for 30 million years. Recently, thanks to the use of ESO's Very Large Telescope, details about the black holes have been spotted. In fact, not two but three supermassive black holes, tightly packed into a space no larger than 3,000 light years, are in place at the heart of the galaxy. Such discoveries tend to confirm a hitherto hypothetical scenario of galaxy evolution. The process of two galaxies merging had already been envisaged, but these results show that several of them can merge at the same time, accelerating the process of forming very massive galaxies. NGC 2623 is a spiral galaxy in the constellation Cancer, some 279 million light years away. It was discovered in 1885 by astronomer Eduard Steffen. This galaxy has many characteristics. First and foremost, it is a liner galaxy since its nucleus has an emission spectrum defined by broad lines of weakly ionized atoms. It is also luminous in the infrared and qualifies as a star-forming galaxy and an active galaxy. NGC 2623 has a very distinctive shape on the sky. This is due to a major collision and the cannibalism of a large galaxy on a smaller one. A breathtaking image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope has revealed a little more about this galaxy. The scene of cannibalism stretches over 100,000 light years. Although the merging galaxy is much too far away for us to observe it, live from Earth with the naked eye, Hubble has brought back some wonderful details. The two galaxies that now make up NGC 2623 were probably originally spiral galaxies similar to our own Milky Way. In the images brought back by Hubble, they appear to have collided. They were certainly each traveling on trajectories that brought them very close to each other. The gravity of the larger one disrupted that of the smaller one, bringing them closer together until the former literally devoured the latter. Now their orbits are distorted, their initial silhouettes have changed, and two long coils of matter can be seen, stretching over 50,000 light years each. These are known as tidal tails and are being pulled apart at the start of each galaxy by the gravity of the other. As the collision took place obliquely rather than head-on, the tidal tails appear to be twisting somewhat. During the collision, huge clouds of gas collided, forming stars that can be seen in blue all around the tidal tails. They will only live for a few million years. At the heart of the colliding galaxies is total anarchy. Gas deprived of gravity forms arches and furious star formation takes place. The formation and death of stars leads to the creation of dust, which absorbs light and hides the view of what's going on behind it. In such encounters between two galaxies, the stars are, at this scale, so small that the chances of them colliding with each other are virtually nil. Clouds of gas, on the other hand, are much larger, which explains why they collide, resulting in the formation of new stars. Using techniques to date the stars involved in the collision, astronomers have estimated that the catastrophe occurred less than 100 million years ago, which is quite recent on the cosmic timescale. The chaos will calm down one day, and in a few million years, NGC 2623 will become a larger elliptical galaxy. The evolution of NGC 2623 reminds astronomers of the fate that awaits our galaxy. 
Within four billion years, the Milky Way will collide with one of our nearest neighbors, the Andromeda Galaxy. The two galaxies are heading towards each other at a speed of approximately 430,000 kilometers per hour, or 270,000 miles per hour. The stellar halo of the Andromeda Galaxy is much larger and more complex than that of the Milky Way. Andromeda is a notorious cannibal that has already swallowed up a good number of galaxies in our cosmic neighborhood. But more on that later. Astronomers have attempted to illustrate what will happen in this collision. As in all galaxy collisions, it would appear that the objects contained within, such as stars, will not collide head-on. Proxima Centauri the closest star to the Sun is almost 30 million times the diameter of the Sun. On a human scale, it's as if the Sun were roughly the size of a coin, and Proxima Centauri was 750 kilometers, or 460 miles away. On collision, the Andromeda Galaxy will gradually annihilate the Milky Way and the two will form a giant elliptical galaxy. Names have already been proposed for this new galaxy. One early suggestion is Milkomeda, a contraction of Milky Way and Andromeda. Some scientists preferring to take into account the greater mass of the Andromeda galaxy have proposed the name Andromilka. The fate of the solar system is a matter of conjecture. Scientists have estimated that it would have a 50% chance of being ejected three times further from the future heart of the newly merged galaxy than it is from the current heart of the Milky Way. In the event of the solar system being displaced towards the center of the collision, it would be disrupted by nearby supernovae. As a result, the main objects of the solar system would not suffer any significant damage. By then, however, the Earth will already have been a habitable planet for several billion years due to the Sun's increasing power. The Andromeda Galaxy, also known as Messier 31, is our biggest neighbor. With a magnitude of 3.4, it can be clearly seen by the naked eye, in a dark sky, as a diffuse, elongated spot. It is all the more impressive when viewed through binoculars. Its luminous bulb is surrounded by a gigantic disk, the length of which is equivalent to six full moons placed end to end. With a 300 millimeter telescope, you can see two dust bands and a few stellar concentrations. With a diameter of around 220,000 light years, the Andromeda Galaxy is the largest in the sky, second only to the Magellanic Clouds. It is thought to contain some 1,000 billion stars, between two and five times as many as in the Milky Way. It lies around 2.5 million light years from the Sun in the Andromeda constellation. The first written mention of the Andromeda galaxy dates back to 964 in Abd al Rahman al Sufi's book of fixed stars. It was then spotted by Simon Marius using a telescope in 1612 and photographed for the first time in 1887 by Isaac Roberts. The Andromeda Galaxy is the nearest spiral galaxy to the Milky Way, and is twice as large and more densely populated than the latter. It is sometimes even considered its twin. However, the Andromeda Galaxy appears to have formed three billion years ago, whereas the oldest star in our galaxy dates back over 13 billion years. Images of its core, taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, reveal two luminous structures. These have long been mistaken for two cores, but in reality, there is the true core, and alongside it a simple concentration 
of stars in close orbit. The Andromeda Galaxy is a coveted subject of study for astrophysicists. They seek to explain the physical characteristics of the galaxy's formation. It appears that the formation of the Andromeda Galaxy was the result of the collision of two galaxies. The first was present 7 billion years ago. A second, four times smaller, was brought into its path 4 billion years ago. The encounter resulted in cannibalism in favor of the larger one, giving rise to the Andromeda Galaxy between 1.8 and 3 billion years ago. This scenario also provides a better understanding of the composition of the halo of gas and stars that surrounds Andromeda. The latter is about 10 times the size of the galaxy itself and is made up of diffuse clusters, shells, and giant star streams. The galaxy's cosmic cannibalism is now helping to explain its various components. The giant star streams and shells originate from the smallest galaxy, while the diffuse clusters and disk deformation originate from the largest galaxy. As the smaller galaxy is less massive, it forms fewer heavy elements and stars than the larger one. The Milky Way is the galaxy to which our planet Earth belongs. It is an immense disk of stars. It consists of an intensely bright, compact central region called the Bulge and less dense spiral arms. Our galaxy's disk is estimated to be 100,000 light years across and 1,000 light years thick. Since 1991, a team of astronomers has discovered that our galaxy is not a simple spiral, but a barred spiral galaxy, which implies that it has a short bar of stars on either side of the central bulge. It also turns out to have four spiral arms. From Earth, our view of the Milky Way is very different, as we observe it from the inside, it appears as a wispy band that encircles the entire sky. The Milky Way is made up of 200 to 400 billion stars, so far away that they are impossible to see with the naked eye. Barely 6,000 are visible without an observatory. Although they appear to be crowded together, on average several light years separate the stars from one another. Today, if there's one fact about the Milky Way that needs no further proof, it's that it's a cannibalistic galaxy. This gourmand has been feeding on its fellow creatures since the dawn of time, and is still in the middle of a meal. A team of scientists recently discovered the remains of a galaxy within the Milky Way. It is believed to be the remnant of a satellite that the Milky Way may have agglomerated early in its history. It has been christened Heracles, a name inspired by the Roman mythological hero Hercules, who plays an important role in one of the stories behind the Milky Way's name. The remains of the Heracles galaxy make up a third of the Milky Way's spherical halo. This encounter, which took place 10 billion years ago, was certainly a momentous event in the history of our galaxy. It's quite astonishing that the remains of Heracles weren't spotted earlier, given the important place they occupy in the Milky Way. But since the Milky Way had to be built from the inside out, it was necessary to study the central zones of the galactic halo which are very difficult to assess in order to better understand the mergers it underwent. For 10 years, data were collected through the Apache Point Observatory Telescope in New Mexico. More than 500,000 stars in the Milky Way were studied through their chemical composition 
and velocity measurements. Scientists were thus able to determine which stars came from the Milky Way and which from the Heracles galaxy. Reconstructing the chronology of encounters between the Milky Way and other galaxies is crucial to understanding its current organization, which still bears the traces of this past cannibalism. However, the cannibalism of the Milky Way is not just a story of the past. The Milky Way, which appears as a calm milky band in the sky, is in fact a galaxy as violent as it is destructive. It draws in and swallows up all the smaller galaxies around it. Within the local group, galaxies are inevitably moving closer together. While collisions between stars are rare given the distance between them, clouds of gas are forced together until they compress and heat up. As a result, the largest galaxy devours the smallest. This is how the Milky Way attracts the small and large Magellanic clouds. These are the two largest satellite galaxies in our neighborhood. The large cloud is around 160,000 light years from the Sun, while the small cloud is 200,000 light years away. It is estimated that there are around 3 billion stars in the small cloud, and 10 times that number in the big cloud. The latter is also home to one of the largest nebulae in the universe, the Tarantula Nebula. These two small dwarf galaxies find themselves drawn into the Milky Way by a bridge of matter, forming a ring around its poles. Little by little, the Milky Way snatches matter from these galaxies and brings it to itself. While the Magellanic Clouds were certainly once barred spiral galaxies, they now find themselves completely distorted by the gravitational pull of the Milky Way. And since the mass ratio is favorable to our galaxy, it should eventually annihilate the small and large Magellanic clouds within its structure. In 1994, random images revealed an overdensity of stars close to the galactic center of the Milky Way. Being too massive to be a globular cluster, it found itself categorized as a Sagittarius dwarf galaxy, named after the constellation in which it lies. It lies 75,000 light years from the Sun, and it turns out that the Milky Way is pulling this small galaxy towards it, so that its tidal arms are spreading out around the poles of our galaxy. Stars from the Sagittarius galaxy should quickly disperse and enrich the cannibal halo. Another galaxy appears on the Milky Way menu, the Great Dog Galaxy, known as Canis Major. This dwarf galaxy is located in the constellation of the Great Dog. It is currently the closest galaxy to the Milky Way just 42,000 light-years from the galactic center and around 25,000 light-years from the solar system. It contains around 1 billion stars. The Big Dog Galaxy lies behind the plane of the Milky Way, in a region where stars and gas clouds are the densest, and consequently, occulting. This is why it was only discovered in 2003 thanks to a large-scale infrared survey of the entire sky carried out by a team of astronomers. The Great Dog Dwarf Galaxy is currently being totally dislocated by the tidal forces of the Milky Way. Its center is severely degraded, and a long filament of stars stretches out behind it in rings three times the circumference of our galaxy. Scientists estimate that within 2 to 3 billion years it will be completely digested by the Milky Way 
and its stars incorporated into the structure of the cannibal. Curiosity about the night sky is one of the oldest in human history. It's easy to imagine early man marveling as much as we do at this bluish canvas cloaked in sparkling stars and projecting his myths onto it. Today, astronomy and astrophysics are at the heart of our understanding of the physical world. Our knowledge of the universe is growing ever finer even if, in some respects, it remains more mysterious than ever. The study of cannibalistic galaxies provides us with a dazzling sketch of large-scale cosmic evolution. These acts of cannibalism are very common among galaxies. Cannibalism is therefore far from being a barbaric act, but rather a natural process for galaxies this phenomenon has a beneficial effect on stars, promoting their formation in the form of gigantic outbursts. Galactic collisions and mergers are fundamental processes that contribute to the formation and transformation of galaxies over time. Thanks to scientific advances and the development of observation tools that reveal minute details we can now immerse ourselves in the heart of these cosmic interactions and learn more about how stars, gas, and other elements interact to give rise to new, more complex structures. Research into cannibal galaxies promises many more revelations. These phenomena are just one of the countless pieces of the cosmic puzzle still to be assembled. The mysteries of the universe are immense and enigmatic, and they call on us to continue our explorations and research. Who knows what other treasures await us in the depths of space?